Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gareth Bourne. I'm the subject advisor for ICT and computing qualifications at Pearson and Edexcel. I'm here to talk to you today about our new GCSE in computer science. So this presentation is called an introduction to GCSE computer science. And the idea of this little session is to look at the content and the structure of the course in a little bit more detail, highlight some of the support that we offer and some of the main elements of the course that will interest you and basically give you the, in the information that you need to decide if this is the right GCSE for your learners, whether it's based on the form of assessment that we use or the content of the course, basically to decide if, if it's the right content for your learners and if it's something that'll excite and interest them. So I'm going to start off by asking a question, I suppose, and I know that's a terrible way to start off, but um, the first question I think is, what is computer science? And, and I, get, I, I get asked quite a lot to define it, and I get an awful lot of responses when I ask that question as well. A lot of people say straight away it's programming. Um, a, lo a lot of other people say it's problem solving, it's looking at solutions to everyday problems using programming. Some people say it's witchcraft, but there you go. Um, but what we've tried to do is put together a little definition, and, and what we've said is that computer science is the study of how computer systems work and how they are constructed and programmed. And then it also includes a, a body of knowledge and a set of techniques for solving problems, and of course it includes practical programming skills. So that sounds like an awful lot to pack into a GCSE, so the idea of this presentation is that We'll look in a little bit more detail at the methods of assessment, and they're slightly different to other GCSEs in computer science that are available at the moment. And we'll also decide, look at the content of the course, and, and it will give you the, the knowledge that you need to, to decide if it's the right GCSE in computer science for you. So I suppose we should start with the content. There are six topics covered in the specification, and, and they're listed on screen. What's worth saying to start off is that the specification is mapped 100% to the Computing at Schools program of study for computer science. Now that was a, a requirement from Ofqual when we developed the course just over a year ago. It's something they asked us to do. It meant an awful lot of additional work on our behalf, but actually it's turned into a, a, a little bit of a, a, a bonus for us because what it means is when GCSEs are redeveloped in 2016, we feel that this qualification will already have the requirements or, or have the content there that will meet the, the new requirements of GCSEs in computer science. So I suppose it means that if this is your choice from 2014, you won't have to, uh, to make a really quick change again in 2016. If you look quite closely at the topics, you can see they're very similar to the CAS program of study as well. There, there, there's similarities in the titles and, and certainly the content. But it's worth look drawing your attention to topics one and two, which are problem solving and programming. And they're probably the main elements of the course. In fact, they're such big parts of the, of the, the course that they're thought as a strand that runs through all the other copi topics within the, the specification. And this is, of course, where learners will take on and, and, and establish their com computational thinking skills. And I'll talk a little bit about more computational um, thinking in a moment when we discuss the assessment. But it's fair to say that, that those two stands, strands do make up a, a, a very strong part, of the, a very large part of the course. And, and, and if you're a school that is strong in, in programming skills and, and encoding um, expertise, then this is certainly a, a, a positive for you. So while we're there, let's, let's quickly look at the structure ever so quick. So the next thing you need to decide is, if this is the right GCSE for your learners, does it follow the right assessment structure for you? So it's similar to the, the, the the title of computer science is important because computer science is just that, it's a science qualification and therefore the assessment structure is similar to all other science GCSEs in that it includes 75% um, into external assessment. So there's a written examination that lasts about two hours and that's where that will make up 75% of the, the entire assessment. And that does, again, that, that seems a lot and of course that means that the other 25% is made up of, of controlled assessment. I've already mentioned that GCSEs were being re redeveloped in 2016, and it's very likely that the existing format of a 60% control assessment, it's very unlikely that that will stay. So again, if you're making a, a new choice today, or, or, or for, for September, choosing a, a qualification with 60% control assessment means that you'll probably then have to, to make a change in a couple of years' time. So effectively what this does, this, this content and this structure future-proofs our GCSE so that we don't expect any change when um, GCSEs are redeveloped in 20, 20, uh, 14, 2016. Sorry. 
Finally, it's worth mentioning that GCSE Computer Science is a part of the, beta of the EBAC and it will count as a, as an EBAC measure in secondary school performance tables. So if you have a student who's, for example, studying three sciences along with computer science, the computer science plus biology will mean they meet the science requirement of the EBAC. And that's a, that's a very important measure for schools. I mentioned ever so briefly that computational thinking is a key feature of this specification. In fact, computational thinking accounts for almost 65% of the entire assessment spread over the, the two elements, the, the externally assessed written paper and the control assessment. What that means for the written examination is it's, it's not just the recall of knowledge or, or sitting down writing essay style answers. It, is, it, it means that the, the examination itself assesses content from the specification, including practical pro programming. So that means it's more hands-on questions such as um, assessing flow charts, uh, reading and interpreting structured English, uh, writing pseudocode, basically looking at programs that we provide them with on the paper and deciding how could I make changes to that, how could I improve it, what does the code tell me straight away. And that's skills that they'll pick up through their, through their programming um, skills. I've got a couple of examples of, of some of the um, questions which I'll look at in a, in a second. But before I do, I just want to make one, one more point. That's what a 75% examination does for you is it, it gives you a little bit more time to enjoy and to, to um, spend, spend time on the elements of the exam that are interesting and, and exciting to the learner. So that means more time writing programs, developing your own programs, b working on them, improving them and so on, rather than spending time chasing 50 hours worth of control assessment every day around the classroom. It also gives you a little bit more time to, to breathe, I think, and just, you know, as a teacher, if, if offering a GCSE course means nothing but marking control assessment to you. I think this gives you a little bit more time to enjoy the, the, the content in this one. Okay, so let's just quickly look at a couple of the questions I mentioned. So here's an example of a question off one of our sample assessment papers. It's an example of a flowchart question. This allows learners to step into a program, to analyze what's taking place, to look at the, the information that we provide and see exactly what is happening in this, in this element here. In this case, they're given a scenario and they're asked what might occur during different processes. So what's happening at point A, what's happening at point B, C, D, and E, and so on. There is a decision symbol in there that where learners can decide what might take place there. It gives them um, the potential of a, a loop that's going to happen in the program and, and, and they can look at what might occur outside of the program if it successfully runs through. So again, practical computing skills, being able to look at a program, break it, break it down into its constituent parts and analyze it in that way. I have another nice example of a, an algorithm. So in this case, this algorithm asks learners, um, it provides them some information up front and it asks them to, to almost debug the, debug the algorithm. So look at it, what could potentially go wrong based on the information that you can see here. Um, on top of that, learners could be asked to analyze and rewrite or even improve upon algorithms that we provide them with. And again, you can see where it's not just about knowledge recall. It's not just about that's a fact I learned in that lesson and I have to remember that. It's actually using those practical skills. A learner might look at that and see, um, see an example that's similar to a program they've written themselves or designed themselves and it lets them use those skills in the actual exam. Right. That leads us on nicely to the control assessment element. So it's a control assessment that learners have 15 hours to complete. It consists of three tasks, and they all have a similar context. What they'll see throughout the control assessment is smaller steps, activity one, activity two, and three. Those smaller steps come together to make a larger program. The project brief is set by us at Edexcel, and a new brief is published every year. So there's lots of content there to practice and, and look through already. You'll be able to see how previous um, assessments have offer different problems and different solutions to learners and you'll be able to practice with those before sitting your own control assessment. And a very interesting point is that the control assessment can be produced with a choice of three programming languages and, and the three we've gone for are Python, Java and C++. And they're quite progressive, there's a lot of options there. It's, it's not just C++, it's a C or a C, any derivative of C. So C, C++, potentially C sharp in the future. So if you've got that sort of knowledge in your, in your school, then, th then that's a, a bonus for you. 
but Python itself is certainly a, a, an excellent an extra computer language for learning with, and we've developed our scheme of work and our lesson plans from a Python point of view, and we've also created a scheme of work that's ideal for learners who've never programmed before. So if you're not delivering comp uh, computer science at key stage three in any way, or if you haven't in the past, the content that we'll give you will help you to, to teach your learners from the start. Let's just quickly look at the actual control assessment brief itself. So this is task one where learners are asked to um, register an, a new learner or a new player in a particular game task. So it's quite an exciting, it's quite a, a, an interesting project for them. As you can see here, they're given some structured English. They're given a series of, of instructions as to what they're expected to the outcomes of the program to be. And then they look at that structured English and they're expected to implement the design themselves. They need to make their final product easy to read. They need to include a variety of comments. They need to um, make sure that the user doesn't just see a successful program, but also understands what the code is doing. And um, it's quite an easy task, I suppose, to, to kick off the controlled assessment. As you can see, they're expected to do this in around about an hour and a half of the 15 hours allocated to control assessment. Of course, the next task will be form become more challenging, and it'll develop on that, and they'll be expect they, they'll be able to use content from the first task to um, to work towards the second. So, just for the purpose of this present presentation, I asked one of our team who'd never programmed before. She had she works actually as a support as she supports English GCSEs, and I said, take home Python at the weekend, do a couple of the tutorials, see what you think, and then have a go and attempt make an attempt at the. Um, solution to activity one. What it basically does is, she, she managed to do it in, uh, in about a day. I know students are, are expected to do it in an hour or so, but of course they'll have had uh, uh, two years worth of build up to this and they'll have developed their Python skills. But she managed to, not to, to produce the solution in a year. You can see there's some obvious print out the screen. She's defined a function. She's called that function later on. There's some validation in there. And then there's finally um, uh, some outputs to the screen of her content, the, co the content that she's produced. Now, the benefit of this, the benefit of doing something like this, looking at our sample assessment materials, trying it out for yourself is, it helps you understand any lim limitations that you might have as a department or as a team working in a school or a college, anything that might stop you from delivering a, a qualification like this. It means you can ensure you have the right skills and the right content in place. You can practice our controlled assessment in advance. You can practice it with your students in Key Stage 3 and see if they're the right type of learners for Key Stage 4 computer science. Right, let's move on. Just quickly then, I want to show you a little bit about what we're going to do to support your delivery of GCSE computer science. This is a two-year two planner that we've produced um, as part of the scheme of work. And what this does is it assumes that you're going to have two hours a week over two years, so a standard GCSE slot. It assumes that your pupils will have little or no experience of, of delivering or of programming in the past. So again, we've, we've plotted in time, like for example, there's a lot of two hour, two, two homework slots a week where they're going to be expected to, to build and, and, and establish on their, their programming skills. We've based the scheme of work around Python because we think it's a, a really great language to learn programming with. Of course, you might have expertise in-house already that can deal with J uh, Java or C++, but it's not difficult to take the, the scheme of work that we've done and, and, and switch the, the programming choice and, and switch to Java, perhaps. Problem solving and programming are a real heart of the course. We, we, we haven't used... Um, we haven't offered you the opportunity to do theory and then programming, and then theory and programming. Instead, we've done for this a sort of a zipper approach, which, mean, which means you can deliver some of the theory alongside the practical programming tasks. And what that, be, what that basically do, means is it, it means you integrate the theory into the practical work. And again, when you come to, to sit an examination like ours, it means you're prepped for that type of question. Um, there's two blocks of program solving, uh, sorry, problem solving and programming. An, intro an, intro an introductory block for the autumn of year 10, and then an advanced block in year 11. So again, you can see how students can take, take on board skills in the interim and, th and then develop them as they go through. We've also left in um, one, one major factor of the course is that the control assessment becomes available in the Christmas of year 11. So in January of year 11, your students, while they'll have produced a lot of... Um, 
a lot of previous work uh, on sample materials or they'll produce programs that you've set aside for them. In year 11, they'll see their control assessment for the first time. It'll be their first opportunity to see exactly what they've got to build before they sit down for those 15 hours. So what you can see here is we've, we've blocked in quite a lot of uh, time around about year to, um, February of year 11 where you'll spend your, your time on producing the control assessment. Last thing I just want to draw your attention to is the scheme of work. It's available to download now on the GCSE computer science pages. I mentioned before it's linked to Python, but what you might want to do is spend some time over the next few months in preparation for September, perhaps polishing off your own Python skills, maybe picking it up for the, from, the, from the very start for the first time. But also it leaves you time to, to look at what you need to do to change our scheme of work or to perhaps to, to incorporate it over to Java or to C++, wherever the expertise lies in your area. Okay, that's everything from me. Um, if you have any questions about anything that you've seen on our presentation or our, or our GCSE in computer science in any way, you can email me on teachingict at pearson.com. My name's Gareth Bourne. Thank you very much for listening.